What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to the episode of Locked On Buckeyes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Thursday, December 3rd, the year 2020, and there's something interesting, a number that's in today's date that is also in the record of the basketball team. Today is the 3rd of December, and the Buckeye basketball team just moved to 3-0 and on the season. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked on Buckeye. Lined up for today is segment number two. We will talk about why the Buckeyes not having a test in their non-conference games before playing Notre Dame could hurt them. And then also in segment three, we'll talk about a couple Buckeyes that received invites to another postseason bowl. But first, we talk about that team that just moved to 3-0 and on the season. Early on in this season, we all knew there were going to be differences, there were going to be challenges, there were going to be ups and downs just due to the different style of off-season program and workouts the Buckeyes were able to go through as a team, sometimes individuals, one-on-one with a player and a coach, sometimes small groups. You can do maybe do two-on-two or three-on-three style of workouts. But the five-on-five or normal practices, those were things that were monitored and that were scaled down and weren't done at the same rate. At the same time, after game number one, where the Buckeyes beat Illinois State 94-67, to fans, myself, everyone's happy, everyone's excited, a big win to start the season, let's get this thing rolling. And then game number two, more of a struggle. We saw that 2-3 defense from UMass Lowell really gave the Buckeyes fits throughout the entire game. They win the game 74-64, to and you're wondering, I'm wondering, a lot of people are wondering, are the Buckeyes going to be more like game number one, or will they be more like game number two early on this season? Now, we all know early on in the Big Ten season, the test, the gauntlet style of schedule that I describe the Big Ten to be, That's going to be a huge test early on because going from playing Illinois State, UMass Lowell, Moorhead State, or even Alabama A&M, who the Buckeyes will play on Sunday, playing them is one thing. But going from there and playing at an Iowa or Purdue or an Indiana or Wisconsin or Michigan State, those style of schools that aren't just top teams in your conference, they're top 25, top 10, sometimes top five teams in the country. So the caliber of player, caliber of team, caliber of coach is way different big during Big Ten play than it is during non-conference play. And we saw on Wednesday evening, well, afternoon going into the evening, the Buckeyes team on defense, they can be sticky, they can keep their hands up, and their intensity on defense is truly what helped them throughout this game to beat Moorhead State. 77 to 54. That's correct. That's not a typo. And no, sometimes your boy does stutter here on the podcast or today with it being a video version, WKYC in Cleveland or Toledo or in Columbus as well. If you're watching this video via video, I just did it right there. You notice that your boy sometimes stutters once he gets going. No, didn't stutter. No typo. Go to the Twitter. Go hit the Google. Go do whatever, read an article, doesn't matter. You'll find that final score, 77 to 44, is the final score of that game. And early on in the game against Moorhead State, I am watching, watching the defense primarily. I'll get to the offense in a second and give me about 30 seconds there. But the offense in, in just a second there, because the offense had some things there that need to be worked out. But on defense, defensive intensity would lead to easy baskets on the other end of the court defensive intensity will lead to momentum for you and for the players on the bench that are your cheerleaders, that are literally the crowd in the arena. It will allow them to have different chants and to be more excited and start hyping you up when you get the ball and start hyping you up up after a big defensive play and you get hyped up on defense. That leads to bigger, easier baskets on the other end of the court. And you saw early on, Good defense, defensive intensity, C.J. Walker's hands in the lane, hands in a passing lane, being right there on his defender, not allowing an easy access pass to anybody there on the court. Had a couple steals, had, had some easy transition buckets. Phenomenal job. Things on the defensive end make things on the offensive end of the court a whole lot 
easier for you to get on offense. And against UMass Lowell, I had to think back very quickly. Against UMass Lowell, we saw early on that 2-3 defense was a problem for the Buckeyes. A huge problem. Now, we all have probably seen basketball where a 2-3 defense is something that has been a problem for a certain team. What can you do to combat the 2-3 defense? Number one, flash to the middle. Inside out basketball, you have to find a way to penetrate. And what the Buckeyes did too many times during the game now that they did win big, a big, a big second half there. But what the Buckeyes did too many times is settle for bad shots that were inside the two point inside the line or just settle for threes. Everybody knows by now the Buckeyes will not be an elite or a good three point shooting team. That's not a problem. You can still win that without being a good or elite three point shooting team. But you cannot fall in love and say, I'm going to ride or die with that shot behind the three-point line. Sometimes the Buckeyes did that. And once they realized, hey, we can score inside. We can score in the paint. We can do certain things there. It became to be a whole lot easier. We saw EJ Little with some easy, tough, big man style of baskets down low in the paint. You saw Kyle Young have, have some. Kyle Young for the three popped out uh, from, the, from, the center of the, from the center of the court, top of the key there. Shoot that three. I was like, that's that's nice. A, a nice jump shot. You're open. You got space. You're not forcing it in the offense. A phenomenal job there by Kyle Young. Also, a couple other things. The rebounding was good. CJ Walker was good. And then almost everybody scored on the team. Um, the leading score, I believe, the, the scoring was spread out very, very well throughout the game. And one quick thing before we get off this topic of the basketball game on Wednesday. I've talked about the defense earlier. Go back and look at the stat sheet. The Buckeyes held Moorhead State to 25% shooting from the field. Let me double check that very quickly. I was going off of memory. Yes, that is correct. They held Moorhead State to 25% shooting from the field, 13 of 52, 13 made shots on 52 shots that they took. And then another key thing for the Buckeyes with this game, 15 of their 27 buckets came off of assist. You struggle a little bit with things in, in the game. The easy way to combat that is to pass the ball around and allow the, the ball movement to create easy shots for you, which frustrate the opposition. Let's step away really quickly. When we come back, we will discuss why I think the lack of test or not having a test so far in a season before playing Notre Dame could hurt the Buckeyes in about a week from now. Do you ever feel like you're always on what do you do when you need a moment to chill? These days, everything is go, go, go. It's nonstop hustle all the time. Work, friends, family, a million pressing social issues, and an expectation to be on 24-7. Well, there's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. Coors Light wants you to know that no matter what sport is on this fall, Saturdays are your time to chill. Watching football is Therapeutic defense. It is uninterrupted me time and an excuse to chill and drink beer. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's literally made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door at get.coorslight.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. As we continue the conversation surrounding the play of the basketball team this year and a basketball-centered or dominated show today, a little football at the end, but primarily it's basketball today. And I told you before, I love the basketball. And maybe at the end of the season, you may love the basketball more than you already do due to my enthusiasm and energy and effort. The Buckeyes showed energy and effort on the defensive end. I hope when they play the Fighting Irish on December the 8th, in South Bend, Indiana, their first road challenge. I hope they bring the energy and effort they utilized against Moorhead State. I'm a person. Let's get to know Jay today. I know I haven't been hosting this podcast very long, but let's get to know Jay. Jay does not like test at all. School test, a test in general. Well, let's, let's just stick with school. Let's just stick with school for this topic today. In school, your boy didn't like him. No, sir, re Bob. He didn't like those tests at all. I didn't like to study. Even if I knew the material, I, for some reason, my anxiety level rose up simply because there was a test that I had to be prepared for and I had to be confident in my answers 
You know you couldn't cheat. You know that you, you, you all know how it is. Sometimes as, as a guy, there's that girl that you try to talk to a little bit, get to know a little bit, simply to try to look over there and say, hey, what's what's the answer to number to number 13? It's multiple choice, and I don't know, man. These four all, all look the same. So help me out. She slide that thing over on her desk to the corner so you can peek over. Thank you. I appreciate it. I got you at the class. And you know how it is. You try to sweet talk a, a female. I'm not, I'm not trying to go off the wall, but you know how you know how it is. You try to sometimes not take advantage fully, but try to try to do things so you can have an advantage during a test. And in basketball, in football, tests are needed. North Carolina just lost to Texas on Wednesday. I think that game got over before the Buckeyes game got over Wednesday evening. We already talked about Kentucky lost. Talked about how Villanova lost. Talked about how, oh, there was another one. Virginia lost. You're seeing these schools, these schools that are top 25, that consistently get top talent in college basketball out of high school. You're getting all Amer McDonald's All-Americans at these schools all the time. And all of a sudden, they are struggling. They lose games in the non-conference. And it's a test. Now, the Buckeyes, we look at – I could, you don't have to know anything about these schools. Let's just look at the names here. Illinois State, should that be a win? Yes. Was it a win? Yes, it was a big one. What's the next game the Buckeyes played? UMass Lowell. You don't have to know anything about the the hierarchy or what who's who's a power conference. If you do, that's all you have to know. Excuse me. All you have to know is like who's in a power conference. You don't know have to know about their recruiting. You don't know have to, have to know about UMass Lowell and their coaching staff. UMass Lowell. What conference are they in? Enough said. Should that be a game they win? Yes. Did the Buckeyes struggle? Yes. But did they win? Absolutely. Was that somewhat of a test? Yes, in the sense it was, but not in the sense of the test your boy Jay is talking about right now. More head state on Sunday. Were there times the Buckeyes were tested? Yes. Now, they did have the lead for almost 35 minutes in the game, so that's one thing. But that was still somewhat of a test. Alabama A&M on Sunday, December 5th, and then also December the 8th, uh, which is a Tuesday, about a week, ago, a week away from now, about half a week from now, they'll play Notre Dame. On the road in South Bend, not just their best opponent they have played all year, also their first road challenge of the year. Now, I understand the Buckeyes are supposed to go to South Dakota in the uh, Bad Boy Mowers crossover classic, I believe it was. And they're supposed to play, it was an 18 field, supposed to play Wednesday, I mean, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I believe. I believe the schedule was set up for. I understand that. I get that. I completely understand how that has changed, how that has shifted due to the Rona and how Chris Holtman in the athletic department said, no, we have to dial this thing back and we need to allow our team to stay in the state of o Ohio, maybe go to Indiana and then start Big Ten play at that time um, to try to factor out and filter out what's going to happen with the Rona, the way that they see how that thing should be handled. Well, what do we have? No true test. Now, North Carolina and Texas, is Texas on the level of North Carolina? No. But is Texas a tougher challenge than Illinois State, UMass Lowell, Moorhead State, and Alabama a and Absolutely. Do I believe the Buckeyes are ready? Will they be able to face a challenge of facing the Fighting Irish? Absolutely. The ACC Big Ten Challenge, it's not just for a tough opponent in the non-conference it's also for bragging rights. It's also for talking trash. It's also to say, you know, I, I probably won't do it here. I don't do this much. But you know that the talking heads on TV, your sports talk radio shows, they'll come out and say, oh, wow, look at this, y'all. Look at what we have here. We have a conference, Big Ten or ACC, who won the challenge. So, therefore, that says that conference is better than the other. I don't like utilizing that, especially so early in the season. First quarter of the season, as you know, in football, First quarter of the season, things are different than they are in the second, third, and or fourth quarters of the season as well. So I won't do that, and I will not utilize that argument here. But one thing I will say is this. Even though your boy doesn't like a test, a test proves and shows what I have in me, what I am capable of, and how I respond to adversity and a challenge during any given point in time. Yes, Every team so far has had some type of challenge for the Buckeyes because the Buckeyes didn't hold anybody to zero points. And even if they did, that's a challenge in and of itself. 
Basketball, it's a challenge. But I myself would have loved for the schedule to be a little bit different before facing Notre Dame. Even though the Rona is a thing, I want to see the Buckeyes face a, a tougher challenge before facing Notre Dame. Because you go there, even though there's no fans there. Well, there may be. It's Notre Dame. They might have fans. I haven't watched a home game from Notre Dame this season. They might. But even though it won't be a full sold-out crowd, you're still traveling. You're still altering your travel accommodations, what you're used to, and it's a different environment than what you have played in so far. Yes, going from the shot to the Cavelli Center, that's one thing. Those are both in Columbus. Leaving Columbus, going to another city, going to another arena to play the basketball, that's a different story. I would have loved to see the Buckeyes face a tougher challenge in the non-conference. We'll see how they go against Alabama A&M, and we'll see how they will do against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish on December the 8th. Let's step away very quickly. Those of you watching via video, we're just going to roll on through with this thing. Those of you on the podcast, since I'll be, I'll be away, and then come right back and talk about two more players on the football team that got an invite to postseason bowls. Looking for a Sunday pregame show that talks about every game and every team in depth? Check out the Locked On NFL Sunday show live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. No sketches, no celebrity cameos, no fluff, just football every Sunday morning with hosts Cody Warwick and Ross Jackson. Follow and subscribe to Locked On Live on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and and YouTube, and don't forget to turn on notifications to be notified when the show goes live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Buckeyes podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And as we discussed yesterday, we talked about a couple Buckeye football players that got an invite to the Senior Bowl. It's a postseason bowl. It allows players to show off their skill skills in front of NFL executives, scouts, coaches, and those that fall into that category in a in a close knit location. The coaches, the scouts, they can watch the every move of the athlete. Watch and see. We talked about a test last segment. Watch and see how a player responds to a test or a challenge in practice. Hey, maybe it's one on one wide receiver versus corner. Let's say the corner gets that receiver time after time after time again. All of a sudden, it's time to see, hey, young man, how do you bounce back? Let's say it is pass pro, pass blocking drills, and the left tackle keeps getting beat by the stand-up defensive end time after time after time again. That left tackle says, hold on, I have to deep down know and utilize my technique, utilize my leverage, utilize my base, utilize my kick, utilize exactly what I do in practice to be the best I can be, and I got to step it up. Next next rep, that left tackle who is getting beat over and over and over starts to figure out, oh, okay, he's going to do this move. Here's how I can counter that, or he's going to do that move. Here's how I can counter that. And that's what you see in these postseason bowls. Well, there's another postseason bowl for players to show off their skills. They can get more play and more time, attention in front of executives, coaches, scouts, those that fall into that category. Uh, that category. It is the Hula Bowl. Now, we, you live in the Midwest. I live in the Midwest. Well, no, not, a lot of you live in the Midwest. I live in the Midwest, and I right now am cold, extremely cold. You say Hula, Hula Bowl, I think Hawaii. I think, hey, hey, let's go. Let's go now. I'm ready to go to get away from this cold, cold weather we're about to endure oh, for way too long. The Hula Bowl, early on, I believe it was started in the uh, 1940s, I believe, late 1930s or 1940s. The date escapes my memory right now. But early on, the game was played between players on the mainland, the states, and then also a, uh, a group of high school all-stars there in Hawaii. In 1960, it moved to the current format, which is an all-star style invite-only game where players go to Hawaii. I believe the game is played in Oahu, a beautiful place. Like I said, I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Oahu. Beautiful weather. Let's go. I don't want to endure this anymore. 
Uh, invite only bowl. And we talked about how tough Borland and Trey Sermon got their invite to the senior bowl, which is more well known, especially for those of us that are college football fans, those of us that follow the game every single year. That's more known. That's more common. The hula bowl, not as common, doesn't get the same amount of, of attention that the senior bowl does, but it provides the same style of avenue, a showcase for players to get more time to potentially get drafted or become undrafted free agents shortly after the draft is over. Thayer Mumford and Jonathan Cooper are the latest, two latest Buckeyes to receive invites to a postseason bowl. No, they didn't go to the Senior Bowl. They got invited to the Hula Bowl. Thayer Mumford, phenomenal. I, I think right now, honestly, if you're trying to, if you're trying to say in all like the a top offensive lineman on the team. It's hard to pick between Thayer Mumford and Nicholas, Nicholas Petit Frayer. Left tackle, right tackle. Those, those guys on the on either side that are solidifying the edges of the line for Justin Fields. We talk about the offensive line issues all the time. You've rarely heard me or anybody else you may listen to or people that you may read articles that write articles. There's been very little criticism of the left and right tackle throughout the entirety of the season. Maybe you may have had a question mark. You may have said, oh, I don't know. I'm a little uneasy. Through four games, the Buckeyes left and right tackle have been the solid points and the solid positions on the offensive line. Thayer Mumford, I'm very happy for you that you're getting this opportunity, and I look forward to watching you and, and seeing how you do there, not just in practice when you're showcasing your skills um, as players and as, as coaches and owners and uh, executives. They can look at you and they can ask you questions after plays and they can watch your body language after you get beat or after you win. They can watch you and say, oh, I like that. I don't like that. He can improve right there. Very happy that you got this invite to the Hula Bowl. Another one, the, la the, the, sec other, the other player that got an invite is Jonathan Cooper. Think back to last season. Cooper went down with an injury, only played four games, utilized a new rule put in by the NCAA that says in a season, if you still have a red shirt, you're available. If you only play four games and you don't play anymore, you can utilize that year as a red shirt year. Now, last year, that rule was already implemented, but I know a lot of people, myself included, Wendy Eric King, and now quarterback of the University of Miami, then quarterback of Houston, when he decided to not play after the first four games of the season, that's when the rule was, I knew about it, but I, I started to learn more about it, read more about it, and truly understand the thought and the intent behind putting that rule into practice and putting it, making it a staple and a thing in college football. De'Aaron King now at the University of Miami doing a, a good job, doing a phenomenal job with that program. I believe they're ranked in the top 10, which is great. That's a, a huge climb for, from where that program has been. But also, Jonathan Cooper utilized that same rule as well. Only played four games, had an injury, didn't play anymore, lived, in, lived to play another year at Ohio State, didn't expect for the runner to be a thing, and for this year to not count with eligibility anyway. But it sure sounds like going to that postseason bowl, this is his last year as a Buckeye. Looking forward to him down the road. Now, here are his stats on the season. You may say, Jay, they're not that sexy. They're not that eye-popping. Does he deserve it? Yes, he does. On the season, Jonathan Cooper has 11 tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, one and a half sacks, one pass breakup. One thing I like when I, when I watch Jonathan Cooper, you hear me all the time talk about contain, contain contain on defense, or you hear me utilize um, a phrase, set the edge. Two things, contain, set the edge. Two things that Jonathan Cooper knows very well, that Larry Johnson, who will be the acting head coach as long as the game against Sparty goes through and is played on Saturday, John Larry Johnson preaches this, I'm sure, all the time. Hey, young man, you're the DN. You are on the end of the def defensive line. Goes without saying, but I but I, I, I have to start being more elementary at times with people because I do understand there are a lot of people that don't know football terminology that may come across this podcast. You got to keep contained. You got to do your job. You have to stay out there. Set the edge. Don't let that man outside you. And Jonathan Cooper has done a phenomenal job with that. As a deep lineman and on, on Twitter, I have talked about this quite a bit. A lot of your stats, a lot of the things, excuse me, a lot of the things that you do very well, they do not show up in the stat sheet, and that's perfectly fine. 
A lot of the things that happen on a football field that are really good don't show up in the stat sheet. That's perfectly fine. That's why we love football. There are so many things, so many moving parts going on at the same time. And it allows players like Jonathan Cooper to receive invites such as this one, the same one that Thera Mumford received, as they will be will get an invite. And I look forward to watching them practice and play in the Hula Bowl at the end of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much for coming in and listening or watching another episode of Locked on Buckeyes. Remember, you can always follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked on Buckeye. Remember, guys, five-star reviews, five-star reviews. Fill up the review section on Apple Podcasts with five-star reviews. Other places you, you can listen to and enjoy Locked on Buckeyes every Monday through Friday, five days a week, or Spotify, Stitcher. Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, just to name a few places you can catch Locked on Buckeyes and stay up to date with what's going on with your Ohio State football and basketball team.